The number one and most important reason that all those other diets failed you is because that they were, by definition, semi-starvation diets. A very well-respected person on YouTube, you're going to look at his video, very blunt to the point kind of guy, right? He's a doctor that helped. Now, I talk a lot on this channel about a proper human diet. And you're like, wait a minute, Dr. Barry, you just said diet. So this is just another diet that I'm going to fail at. I'm using the word diets in its proper ancestral form. I'm not saying here's a diet for weight loss. I'm saying here's a proper human diet. This is a key thing he's talking about here. We've spoken about this before, right? If you're on a diet, whatever you want to call it, just eating healthy. If today, whatever it is, you're doing a year from now, you can't see yourself doing that same thing. For example, oh, I'm never going to eat pizza again, or I'm only going to eat this broccoli or whatever it may be. If you can't really do it, you're just lying to yourself, right? Eventually you'll quit, go back to your bad ways, get fat again. There's a reason most dads fail. Statistically, most dads fail. You guys heard the story the other day. Well, not all of you, obviously, about that lady I met who was eating on like 800 calories or some craziness like that because her trainer was lots of muscles, thought that was a great idea. And then eventually she started gaining weight. That's what happens when you do craziness like that. Let me just begin by saying that the reason that all the diets failed you in the past were not your fault, okay? You are not a glut. You are not a sloth. You are not lazy. You are not a loser. You were just sold a bill of goods. You were taught a way to improve your health, to lose fat that never worked. I agree with him here, right? Now, he's not abdicating personal responsibility. Because I've said this before, there's this myth out there that people who are overweight, they're just eating a ton of food in secret, right? They're lazy. They don't work out. It's more like you're trying to cut down a tree with a sledgehammer. I've said this before. I've been there. I've done that, right? Then I got professional coaching. They gave me an ax, then a chainsaw. When you actually see progress and you're maintaining your sanity, right? You're not starving yourself. So you're not hungry, as the saying goes. You can eat what you'd like to eat, all right? And you're living a normal life and you're seeing progress. You're seeing inches come off your waistline. You look different in the mirror. People compliment it. Then you're more motivated, right? You're more motivated to keep doing what the hell it is you're doing. When you don't see progress, you're going to fall off the wagon. And you're going to stay off the wagon. You're not going to get back on. You're going to just quit. And then some months or years later, you'll try again. And this vicious cycle repeats itself over and over. As years go by and you get fatter and fatter and fatter. So the number one and most important reason that all those other diets failed you is because that they were, by definition, semi-starvation diets. So when you're on a diet and your semi-starvation is kind, I told you about that client I had lost the 50 pounds. She was eating like 1,000, 1,200 calories, fluctuating when I met her. Got her up to 1,800 calories. I've shown you guys the FDA charts. And again, governments are conservative. You should be maybe 1,800 calories, a dude, 2,000 calories, right? Most people, a, hell, or I shouldn't say, a, a lot of people are not eating as, quite as much food as they think they are. There's this myth out there that people are just devouring food left, right, and center. And I know it almost sounds contradictory because talk, we talk about calories in, calories out. You got to be in a deficit. This is also true. Both can be true at the same time right? You can be starving, screw up your metabolism, and still need to burn more calories than you're taking to lose weight. These things are both accurate. I know they sound contradictory, but they're both accurate. They told you to move more and eat less, right? Remember that? Now, mm -hmm. they say this in many different ways. Some diets have point systems. Some have cards that you give yourself. Some have stickers when you've had this many starches and this many proteins, but what it all boils down to is they're all calorie restriction diets, which means they are semi-starvation diets. It's been known since the 1940s that when you starve yourself chronically, you wind up with specific symptoms, even eating disorders, inappropriate relationship with foods. I don't think he was trying to be funny there with inappropriate relationships with food, but I found it pretty hilarious. I don't know if you guys did too. <laughs> so there was this big experiment back in the 1940s done by... Ansel Key. And he took a lot of very healthy, young, metabolically well young men who uh, did not want to fight in the war. And he said, okay, you can serve your country a different way. And so they put them on semi-starvation diets, started to exhibit symptoms of eating disorders and, and mental disease that they had never had before. So Ansel Keys wasn't giving these young, healthy men no food. He was giving them about 1,600 calories a day. Wheel and come again, my youth. Wheel and come again. 1,600 calories per day. Hope you guys can see that really clear on the screen, right? Turn off my little ticking scrolling thing. <laughs> 
1,600 calories a day. There are a lot of you guys that think that's eating a lot of food, right? When you're on your diet, you're, you're way below 1,600. He reduced them to 1,600. Almost every client I've met, male or female, I got to increase their calories. They're just not eating enough food. And they all start losing weight. Every single one of them. Whether they stick their turn out, that's another thing. <laughs> but they all start losing weight, right? Sounds almost too good to be true. But when you're starving, your body can eat more food. Let me read to you some of the symptoms that these young, healthy men had when they were on a 1,600-calorie-a-day diet. Listen, if some of these things sound familiar to you. They did to me when back in the day I would try that. I'm sure some of these things might sound familiar to you. The participants exhibited a preoccupation with food. Sexual interest was drastically reduced. The participants reported a decline in concentration, comprehension, and judgment capabilities. It's known that these things happen when you chronically starve a human being. I mean, other things, you know, I've, I've met people talking about their hair kind of falling out, right? Irregular periods, all sort of other crazy things can occur, right? You're not sleeping well, et cetera, et cetera. It's, like, it's a vicious cycle. It cut too much. And indeed, if you chronically starve any mammal on the planet, they will start to become obsessed with food. They will crave food. They will dream about food. Uh, mm. Two of these guys, after the study ended, they became chefs. <laughs> Even though they had previously had no desire in cooking food, they literally were still so obsessed with food after this starvation experiment, they became chefs and put them on a semi-starvation diet. They're going to eventually chew their paw off trying to get out of the cage so they can go back to doing what every mammal on the planet wants to do, is designed to do, is hardwired to do, which is to eat until you're comfortably full. What people used to do back in the day, eat until you're comfortably full, right? They don't just keep piling on the food. It's a lot harder to, or it's a lot easier rather to eat when you're full when eating real food, solid foods, right? Versus processed or worse ultra processed foods. You can munch on that stuff all night long, right? Just keep Another reason that every diet you ever tried failed you is that they deny or ignore sugar addiction. Sugar addiction is a real thing, man. Sugar's the devil. <laughs> sugar is the devil. You ever watch those videos when people quit sugar for 30 days or 60 days? What happened? Yeah, sugar is crazy. Uh, before she became a client, she was working with this other personal trainer and had some crazy concept about eating in moderation. And she's like, I can have whatever I want. It's going to be in moderation. I remember telling her at the time, I don't think that's going to work. She's like, no, it will work and blah, 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 blah. Put on like 20 pounds, right? That does not work. And ironically, when she switched to me, I increased her calories, right? But this random eating in moderation thing, yeah, it's uh, telling to you to have your cake and eat it too. It's not going to work. It's like telling an alcoholic, oh, just have one beer a day. It's fine to have a little beer in moderation. <laughs> It's a good example right there. You wouldn't tell him somebody who is alcoholic that, right? So yeah, the whole just eat a little in moderation, bad stuff. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You have to have some kind of a plan. You have to know what you're consuming, how much, how much protein, how much fat, so much carbs, right? Because pretty common thing, carbs are high and the fat is high. You can't have them both high. You can't be, oh, a ton of fat. That's Probably I'd have phrases like you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? Cake has a bunch of carbs and a bunch of fat in it. People search for how to lose weight, weight loss. They don't search for fat loss, unfortunately. But the reason you want to lose fat specifically is because you don't want to lose a muscle. Because most of the people there, when they're doing these starvation diets, they're not only losing fat, they're losing muscle. Thoughts on eating in moderation versus, I, I, I guess that's if it fits your macros. I know they're not the same, but can you expand on the differences? So if it fits your macros, let's go with that first. The better way to explain this is, let's say you have a target of 200 grams of carbs per day. Where do you get the carbs in rice, sweet potatoes, some candy, or what have you? You just need to make sure you hit these numbers, as in don't go past them. Right. So this is the if it fits your macros, it loads flexibility so you can keep your sanity. You can have the pizza, but at the end of the day, your fat and carbs and protein must not exceed certain thresholds. The moderate eating now is just like, well, you can have your pizza, but it's eaten in moderation. So maybe that's a slice, maybe that's two. It depends. But you're not really tracking anything. So inevitably, eating in moderation, you eat too much or not enough. 
Well, instance, you're not tracking anything, so you don't really know. The reason that every diet you've ever tried has failed you is because they emphasize exercise way too much. This is true as well. Almost anybody, when they talk to me, they'll want to know what the exercise is. All they want to know is the workout. That's like the sexy part of the plan. The, well, what workouts am I doing? And as you guys have said before, when you're sweating, you feel like you're making progress. It's all about the, it's all about the food, man. If you fail in the kitchen, I don't care what workout you have. I don't care what program you have. You can't outwork out about that. It's impossible. It's all about the food. 99% of your fat loss. And when you say you want to lose weight, you mean I want to lose fat. This is very true, right? I mean, you'll see my title thing use the term weight loss and lose weight. Because unfortunately, most people don't know about fat loss and fat. So if you put fat in the titles, it People don't see it or they don't know to click on it. So we talk about weight loss, losing weight, etc. Because that's the terminology the majority of people understand and they know. Another reason that all the other diets <laughs> failed you is because of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. When you're eating less food overall and the food you are eating is nutrient void, you're going to wind up with vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And you know what that's going to lead to, right? That's going to lead to you out there trying to devour food left, right, and center. I've spoken about this as well before. When you eat food that doesn't have something in it, your body still needs things and wants things. So it's going to just make you hungry again. It's going to keep seeking it. Uh, an example of this, well, not exactly with nutrients, is when you try to trick your body, you, your body thinks it's getting sugar, some fake stuff, and your body's like, no, we want the real stuff. It's going to make you hungry again or thirsty again, what have you. So you can only trick it so long, but it knows it needs certain minerals, vitamins, etc. And if you're eating this garbage that has nothing in it, it's going to make you hungry again because it's trying to get it, whatever it is it needs, because it wants to survive, it's trying to keep you alive, right? It's happened to me for sure, right? You just have this, these urges. Like, it's kind of like when you're just super thirsty, but it's not that you needed water, something else was off, right? Maybe you consume too much salt or ironically not enough and you're drinking, drinking, drinking. Um, there is, that's a good similarity there where you just this endless thirst, endless thirst. When something is off and you're trying to rectify it. Next reason all those other diets failed you and that you should break up with them and block their number and never talk to them again is because they sold you on the expectation that the way you were going to judge the way their diet was working for you was by the pounds on the bathroom scale. Yeah, that's not the optimal thing. I told you guys before with my coaches, I had to submit pictures weekly. Front shot, side shot, and a shot of my back, right? And I do that with my clients as well. The scale is a guide. It's just one of many ways to track things. But visual is another one, right? Or your appetite. I'll ask them, is their appetite opening up? Because as I've said, if you're working out a lot and you're sleeping well and you have no appetite, then something else is off. Because if you're burning all this energy, and you're not hungry, something is wrong. That's a red flag right there, right? The scale only moved 10 pounds. Now, if I just had only looked at that scale, I'd be pissed. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be pissed, right? I'm not going to lie. You know, he's very right. I've mentioned before, I had dermatitis. I mean, I technically I still do. Eczema, psoriasis, all these things just magically went away when I started eating differently, right? They just magically went away. You see these stories all the time. People have these skin problems, all these other kind of things, and they clean up their diet. And not just the diet, it's other things, right? perfume, your cologne, something you're putting in your hair. It doesn't matter. You're just not sure what can set you off, so to speak, right? Because you remember, all those things are autoimmune diseases, essentially. Psoriasis and eczema, et cetera, et cetera. It's your body fighting against itself. So at the end of the day, you know, you can summarize all that he's talking about in back to calories in and calories out. It comes to that a lot, right? And on this channel, we build, we what do we say? We follow the laws of thermodynamics. But of course, my boy Homer can do that much better job than I can. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Exactly, Homer. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> because you are determined to transform your body, you made it to the end of this video. To get more tips about how to look great and feel even better, check out one of these videos you see on the screen. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. So later's my massive. Me now. For those who don't speak Jamaican patois, that's goodbye, my people.